Good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Hewitt. I'm Vice President of Packaging and Sustainability at Consumer Brands. Appreciate you joining us today for a very informative uh, session. I thought we'd just take a quick quick moment here and let our panelists introduce themselves. Um, we still have a few people getting added, and then we'll jump right into it. So as I mentioned, John Hewitt, Consumer Brands Association. I will pass it to Rishi. Hi, everyone. I'm Rishi Banerjee. I'm a senior director and head of the Smart Label program. Look forward to sharing program updates with you. I'll hand it over to Joseph. Hey, good afternoon, all. Joseph Eklina. I'm the Vice President and Deputy General Counsel at Consumer Brands. And I think I will next pass it to our friends, uh, um, Whitney and Catherine. Hi, I'm Whitney Weber. I'm the Recyclability Solutions Director at the Recycling Partnership, here to talk to you about RecycleTrack. Hi, everyone. Catherine Hudad, also with the Recycling Partnership. I sit on the innovation team and I'm happy to weigh in with additional insights, especially as it pertains to our data. Well, thank you. I appreciate the self-introductions. I think it's always better to hear from you than from me. Um, why don't we go ahead and get started? Joseph, I know you were going to give us a little bit of an overview of claims, the federal landscape and, and things that, and I was hoping this slide would be in there. Um, you, you're the master at animation uh, and uh, framing up the issue uh, from the broader perspective. So Joseph, please go ahead. Thanks so much, John. So as part of today's conversation, uh, we will be discussing the environment pun absolutely is intended, especially um, the legal and regulatory um, issues that are occasioned um, that brands need to be conscious of. Uh, the CPG industry has increasingly played a role in trying to um, secure a more sustainable future through packaging innovation to minimize negative impact on the environment, increasing the rates of recyclability, and working holistically across all um, aspects of the supply chain to ensure innovation. Um, but even with all of these um, good intents, um, there's a lot of challenges that come along with it. Um, we see on the screen some of the uh, primary stakeholders and sort of the debate around sustainability issues. Um, Taylor Swift has come under fire for um, some of um, her sustainability practices as of other celebrities around uh, private jets. We've seen environmental activists such as Greta Thunberg um, kind of develop um, additional levels of sustainability, especially as younger generations look at the environment and the role that they can play in purchasing from companies that they feel align with their values regarding sustainability. Um, and of course, um, we will not uh, resist the urge to uh, talk about this topic without talking about the Federal Trade Commission. Commission, uh, the preeminent federal agency that regulates all of commerce, but for purposes of today, helps ensure uh, consumer protection through its law enforcement mission around um, advertising and claims. Uh, we put the Incredible Hulk on here because you would not like the FTC when they're angry, nor would you like the plaintiff's bar or other critics of the uh, branded consumer dialogue that really is the underpinning um, of this issue. Um, so with that in mind, um, we can advance to the next slide, and we thought it would make sense to start with the green guides. Um, so uh, for anyone that doesn't know their way around the Federal Trade Commission, um, the green guides um, occupy a really interesting role in the debate around environmental marketing claims. So there is no um, per se rule around environmental marketing advertising at the federal level. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission um, has a very influential set of documents that they have had in existence for, the, for over 20 years called the Green Guides. And what they really do is provide the agency's um, perspective on environmental marketing claims. The FTC has a broad law called Section 5 of the FTC Act. Um, and while everyone on the call may not necessarily be a lawyer, this is a really important law to be mindful of because it really guards against, in the FTC's mind, um, having any sort of deception or um, advertising that they feel would border on greenwashing. So the, the green guides have been um, updated from time to time. We're actually currently in the midst of an update, which we'll be getting into right now. But just to give uh, a foundation, the green guides provide specific recommendations around how the uh, Federal Trade Commission um, would advise marketers as well as consumers on what they feel would be deception with regarding uh, with regard to environmental marketing, environmental marketing claims. So it's really about principles 
And it's about examples on how these principles can come to light in terms of how brands interact with consumers with their environmental marketing claims. Um, the Green Guides have been really influential um, over the past um, several um, decades and many Earth Days along with it. Um, we've seen them updated with um, newer terms and we're gonna get to with the next slide, you'll get a sense of some of the terms that the um, FTC is currently looking at. So if we could just advance. So the, the guides encompass um, everything from general environmental marketing claims, which the FTC for the most part seems to um, discourage uh, ones that say environmentally friendly or good for the environment because that the agency feels that these are a bit more open to interpretation and for that reason, a bit more open to deception. Um, there's also the slew of more specific claims that I'm sure um, many brands and participants on the webinar are gonna be familiar with. Um, carbon offsets, um, programs that use certification programs to attest to their sustainability or environmental uh, impact efforts. Um, if we look over to the other um, uh, column, we'll see some of the ones that are increasingly um, being very important within the consumer packaged goods space around recyclable claims, recycled content, um, and words definitely have meaning. And we're going to get into what some of the debate is around those meetings um, and meanings in a little bit. Um, I also just um, call your attention, and we can actually go to the next slide, where the FTC's current priorities are. Um, so we are actually in smack dab in the middle, um, maybe at the outset or maybe at the sort of the end of that middle, we'll, we'll see, um, of a current um, FTC Green Guide update. So in late uh, 2022, the Federal Trade Commission signaled that it was time to um, take a fresh look at refreshing the green guides. Um, and throughout 2023, there were two instances in which the FTC sought com uh, comment on what they, what they are thinking of in terms of refreshing the guides. And so some of the existing terms that we saw on the previous slide are, are ones that the FTC is interested in uh, reviewing for this tranche of revision. So compostable, degradable, and of course, those really important claims around recyclable, the meaning of recyclable especially, and recycled content claims. Um, and then newer terms, and we can put the word newer in, I guess, air quotes, because these are terms that um, industry has increasingly had to become very familiar with. They've become part of our everyday parlance in many cases. Uh, the claims related to climate change beyond offsets, offsets um, all of the sort of claims that relate to um, carbon, whether it's net zero, carbon neutral, low carbon, carbon negative. Um, you know, the guides were last updated in 2012 and a lot has changed in terms of the overall ecosystem, but especially the brand to consumer dialogue um, with regard to environmental marketing. And so we're seeing that the Federal Trade Commission is sort of taking heed of the proliferation of these topics as they um, are happening in the marketplace. Um, and then of course, the word itself, uh, sustainable, which is a word that that we all seem to throw around in our everyday um, lexicon. Uh, we see brands having you know, instances of their website about their sustainability practices. These have also occupied a huge component of, of the investor community um, on Wall Street. So we see you know, what companies are undertaking for um, more sustainable investment and development. Um, but all these terms um, are really important because um, in many ways, the FTC has not really kept pace um, because of the cadence of the green guides of what has been happening with the marketplace. And so um, in the absence of a per se uh, law or federal advertising standard with regard to environmental, mar environmental marketing claims, and with certain agencies that have the word environment in their title, like the EPA, um, not having set definitions, um, what has really sort of filled the void um, in terms of enforcement and debate around these issues? Well, if we go to the next slide, uh, we will see that uh, a lot of the risky business has come down to um, uh, the legal aspects. Uh, the plaintiff's bar um, has really been very active in this area. Um, in the consumer packaged good, um, consumer packaged good industry, um, we see lots of brands um, on the receiving end um, of accusations around greenwashing. Um, this is a very brief sampling of some of the cases. There's literally dozens that have been filed um, in the last few years. Um, and environmental marketing claims, usually um, the ones that are under attack are some of the same ones that we see in the green guides. And the allegations tend to be that uh, the brand um, has not provided sufficient substantiation um, for its claims. Um, and these can run the gambit. Some of the claims that are enshrined within the green guides um, around compostable, degradable. Uh, uh, we're seeing increasingly though, a lot of debate around the word recyclable. Um, now the word uh, recyclable and recycled content have both been in the green guides for 
some time, but there's been an increasing movement um, from a lot of these lawsuits, which some of them are coming from class action attorneys, some of them are being fueled by the NGO community around whether the word recyclable means merely capable of being recycled or that the brand needs to uh, design for the packaging to essentially ensure that it will be recycled. Um, this has been a uh, ever expanding debate. We've seen the Federal Trade Commission um, seek input on this and both um, industry voices like uh, consumer brands, um, as well as other uh, members of the law enforcement community, um, including state attorney generals have gotten involved in a lot of these debates. Um, and so um, every company is going to have to, you know, look at their marketing, um, not only on PAC, but in other aspects of their um, ecosystem. We've seen certain instances where there's been lawsuits around forward-looking sustainability commitments. So maybe not even something that's on product packaging, but on the website talking about how the company wants or is making efforts toward um, more recycled content for its packaging. Um, and so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, now, if we go to the next slide, we'll see um, kind of what we've been talking about with regard to enforcement coming from the FTC, uh, enforcement with a lower KC coming from the plaintiff's bar. But the state attorney general community um, is also um, really getting more involved. In the past um, two years, we've seen uh, five or six um, actions um, that are still pending. Uh, around some of the same terms that uh, occupy the FCC green guides. And so uh, what we were just mentioning around the word recyclable, capable of being recycled versus designed to actually be recycled, which as we're going to get into can be very specific to whatever the municipal system is. We've seen attorney generals in Connecticut, Minnesota um, get uh, very interested in these issues. We've seen the California attorney general go after some of these issues a bit more tangentially um, where it comes to the plastic producers as opposed to the actual CPG brands. And more recently, we've seen that the New York attorney general has been highly active um, with enforcement efforts in this area, advancing a theory of public nuisance, um, which is essentially saying that because of of the way that um, the plastic is designed or that, you know, in some instances, the allegations are that there have not been enough cleanup efforts that it is causing an environmental injury. Uh, public nuisance is something that we used to see um, from the state attorney general enforcement community before um, laws like the Clean Water Act were uh, passed. It's been a sort of academic philosophical exercise in litigation from a lot of the NGO community, but now we're seeing this continually getting more ratcheted up um, from state attorney generals. Um, so I think we can move on to um, John Hewitt, who's going to give us an overview of now that we know what's happening at the federal level and the overall legal scrutiny of some of these issues, um, a lot of the action tends to be in the states on environmental marketing claims as well as EPR. So, John. Joseph, thank you. And it is if a picture is worth a thousand words or in this case, uh, a thousand controversies or a thousand lawsuits, um, uh, one, of, one of the above uh, anyway. Um, but so as we looked at the federal, uh, as we looked at this, this federal overlay and, and the state attorney general activity, um, there, there's plenty to think about. FTC is in the midst of rulemaking, as Joseph described, and there's no, no, no short shortage of uh, I, items to keep your eyes on. Um, well, um, as, as the map illustrates and lays out, uh, the states did not want to miss the opportunity to join in the fund. They're also in the process of making life more confusing and more complex by adopting conflicting legislation around primarily the use of chasing arrows um, with respect to the, the packages. On plastic, it has to do with the resident identification code, but in many cases, their, their, their inquiry and their concern is not limited to single-use plastic packaging. Uh, the patchwork poses, obviously, a number of compliance challenges for producers. We have states that mandate the use on plastic packaging of resident identification codes.